No, the ayes have it. This bill is set down for third reading forthwith. A point of order, uh, Chris Tremaine. Uh, I'm just in the middle of... Uh, just give me one second. I'm just going to find a third reading speech. Uh, yeah. Speaker? I'm listening. Uh, are you are speaking to the point of order? I'm just going to say I'll give the member an extension of time. By... by. <laughs> Uh, uh, is this a point of order or a no, call? Um, it's a call. Oh, a call. The Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, I'm uh, pleased to be able to move the third reading of this bill. Uh, this, the, that's right, the Taxation Earthquake Measures Bill. Measures bill. Uh, as, as we spoke about in the committee stage, I think there were a number of issues that were raised uh, in the bill, and uh, I think that... Um, but what was quite clear is the very <laughs> strong support that this bill has enjoyed from across the House and in the Taxation Canterbury Earthquake Measures Bill. Uh, in the committee stage, I was able to provide quite detailed answers to the questions uh, that the Minister opposite, particularly with um, some considerable debate around the trading stock issues, uh, which always cause quite a lot of consideration and discussion, and I would commend the progress and the finalisation of the Bill to the House. Um, point of order. I'm just going to rule on something first. Um, the member must um, move that uh, this is a third reading, so if the member uh, would like to do that. Yes, Mr Speaker, I, I did um, seek to do that at the beginning, moving the third reading of the Taxation Canterbury Earthquake Measures Bill. I move that the Taxation Canterbury Measures Bill be now read for a third time. Yes, that's what it should be. The question is... <laughs> um, the question is that the motion be agreed to, the Honourable Clayton Crosgrove. Speaker, I, f I first... I firstly want to congratulate the Minister on his high degree of management and organisation in respect of this bill. Um, I think it, uh, it exemplifies and has set a new, uh, a new uh, um, a height bar for um, how to manage legislation through the House. And it has been, uh, there have been many, many precedents, I think, created in the last uh, two or three minutes, and I thank the Government Whip for moving, the, uh, the Opposition Whip for also assisting in moving the motion. We would not want to see this bill delayed, nor sort of, you know, implode on itself through a through a bungled legislative process. But put, putting that aside, we, we, uh, we did uh, write and, uh, and support the clean slate legislation, and I think we should probably adhere to that principle as well. Uh, look, uh, uh, Mr Speaker, the, uh, the opposition, I think there is unanimity on, both si on all sides of the House and all parties that uh, this bill will be supported. Uh, I will not uh, waylay much longer. Suffice to say that um, this is a good piece of legislation. It will provide some comfort and assistance to... Uh, to a large number of people and entities uh, in, uh, in Canterbury who are going through, um, in many cases, a living hell, actually, uh, in respect of their businesses and uh, in respect of their livelihoods. Um, this will take one less uh, small bit of stress out of a number of people's lives. Uh, it should also be noted that through the earthquakes, uh, uh, as, as I think all members have alluded to, the uh, generosity of spirit exhibited by uh, people and uh, businesses and entities has been um, well beyond, uh, I think, anybody's expectation. Uh, we as, uh, as Canterbury members, and I'm sure I, I, they share this on the other side of the House, uh, you, you find out as a Member of Parliament um, in disasters, uh, one, just how generous people can be, but two, uh, the ability of community leaders and councillors and others to make calls and simply ask for things. Uh, it's amazing what people will do. Uh, and it's amazing what people do in terms of dipping into their own pocket and, uh, and providing uh, uh, goods and services and comforts. And it's also noteworthy, I think, the, you know, there were a large number of employers, I think, who treated their staff very, very well and uh, went beyond what was, what was uh, you know, minimal requirements, if you will. Uh, I think those who did that uh, have the ethos that you know, the staff are the most important asset that organisations have if they are looked after organisations will, uh, will perform and perform well. So uh, it's with a great deal of pleasure again committing the, the Minister who, who I suspect was sort of dropped in it at the last moment to, to shepherd the last stages of this legislation through the House. Uh, he's shown um, uh, amazing legislative and parliamentary flexibility and dexterity to, um, uh, to uh, make sure that this goes through in a timely fashion and doesn't hit any uh, uh, roadblocks on the way and to the officials our thanks as well. I call uh, Nikki Wagner.